Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So today we're going to discuss vaccines cause stroke. Yep, I said it. I said it. Vaccines cause stroke. Now, for those of you that actually think I might be an anti-vaxxer, no, I'm not. For those of you that actually have a irrational, irresponsible, and unprobable belief that somehow vaccines cause stroke, let me disabuse you of that notion immediately. They don't. However, I've been watching some videos on YouTube, uh, and I've fallen down a couple rabbit holes here and there, and I've been watching a few videos about the, the causes of stroke. And unfortunately, in the um, communities of naturopaths, homeopaths, chiropractics, and the anti-vaxxer community, there is a small segment of them that seems to have this just uneducated, irrational belief that vaccines can cause a stroke. <clears throat> Part of that is due to VARES, right? Now, I'm not going to say VARES isn't a useful tool, but I'm going to say VARES is not as useful as it could be. So VARES, for those of you that don't know, and I'm going to use the American system because they have the largest amount of data. Um, they're also the most... Um, divisive in the states about anti-vaxxers. So VAERS is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. The Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. So if you have a vaccine injury, um, you will then report it to VAERS. One second. Get up there. So VAERS is run by the CDC, the Center of Disease Control, and the Food and Drug Administration. Right? It's a cooperative voluntary program where the individual who believes, or a family member of the individual who believes that there has been a negative vaccine event, <clears throat> can go on to VAERS, log on, and, and register them as a vaccine injury. Problem. You have people that are registering vaccine injuries from 20 years ago. right? So if I wanted to, <clears throat> and I'm not going to, because I don't believe in this. No, I don't. It'd be irresponsible. But I'm going to discuss right now how I could be irresponsible if I chose to be. So I could log on to VAERS. I could create a vaccine injury event um, indicating that I suffered a vaccine injury from one of the vaccines I was given between 1969 and 1979. Um, I have the little... Did you just poop? You're pooping on camera way more often. You did that the other day. So I have a little scar right here. Um, I believe that'd be from the smallpox vaccine. <clears throat> I'm probably one of the last cohorts to have been given the smallpox vaccine because we don't vaccinate for smallpox anymore because we've eradicated smallpox due to the global vaccination program. So vaccines are considered to cause injuries. Yeah, and maybe in, in a small population they will. Um, and I'm not going to get into that for the purposes of this discussion. But VAERS is a post-marketing safety surveillance program for collecting information about adverse events, possible side effects, and other and that occur after the administration of a vaccine that is licensed in the United States. Post-marketing. Not post-research. Not post-development. Not post-distribution. Not post-administration. Um, post-marketing. It's an advertising campaign, right? The best part is you have the ability to go to VAERS at any point and log in. So if I wanted to claim that one of the vaccines I got in the first 10 years of my life caused my stroke, no one's here to double check that. I'm not required to submit my files and paperwork to a medical practitioner. I'm not required to submit to some form of investigation. I can just fill out the form and, and someone will just take me at my word. Right? I've only played a doctor on TV. I've never been a doctor. So if we go from VAERS between 1990 and 2010, now this, this information's a bit dated, but it's what I, I know it's a bit dated. I get that, but it's what I found. Okay, just deal with it. Um, there are 306 cases of stroke between 1990 and 2010. And those 306 cases all reported, again, this is self-report, they all reported that their stroke was directly caused by a vaccine. Some of them said that the stroke was 
within six weeks of a vaccination. Okay. Some of them said that their stroke was within two weeks of the vaccination. Some of them said that it was after a flu vaccination or hepatitis vaccination or diphtheria tetanus and pertussis. Okay. And the number of patients who took two or more vaccines and developed a stroke was 12 out of that 306. Well, that seems a bit odd because in the first 10 years of your life, you're getting a boatload of vaccines. So I don't know why that would be the case, but I get a vaccine the middle of April of last year. I have my stroke at the end of June of last year. How is that even a possibility? And the only way you could responsibly try to effectively equate your stroke had anything to do with any vaccination would be you would have to be medically surveilled every single day for two to three weeks before your vaccination to up until your vaccination to your stroke. There are people on VAERS that are trying to claim a stroke was directly caused by their vaccination 20, 30 years with time between the two. <clears throat> that's irrelevant and that's irresponsible. And, and that, that is completely, like you can't, you can't justify that. So people that want to try to make the, the bullshit Aloma claim that strokes and vaccines have any relationship, they're, they're intellectual driftwood. They're, 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 they legitimately don't know what they're talking about. <clears throat> now, there are some people in the, again, homeopathic, naturopathic, and chiropractic community, and the, then again, the anti-vaxxer community, that are going to try to say, oh, strokes cause vaccine. So there was a researcher by the name of, or there is a researcher by the name of Fullerton. He decided to do some research about children, vaccination, and strokes. So his, again, I'll include the, in the description down below, I'll include the link. So he found 355 children that had a stroke, and he, had, he then found 354 children that did not have a stroke. And they tried to match them age for age, gender for gender. So they could try to make everything about as equal between the stroke group and the control group as they can. Well, they found that there's a six-fold increase of having a stroke after an infection. That half of his patients had a respiratory infection, like the common cold. Half had a fever. Um, one thing they found that was very interesting, children with few or no vaccinations were also found to have a much higher risk, about seven-fold increase of having a stroke compared to those that had most of their vaccinations. <clears throat> Let me read that again for those in the back that missed it. Children with few or no vaccinations, and I would also assert people following this highly irregular vaccination schedule where they have come up with something all on their own, um, are at a seven-fold higher risk of having a stroke compared to children that had all, if not most, of their vaccinations. I think that says it right there. Not only that, they determined that stroke will naturally occur in about 11 children per 100,000. So, unfortunately, strokes, it's the equal opportunity thing. It doesn't matter old, young, man, woman, white, black, Asian, First Nations, it doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, stray, I'm sorry, straight, gay, it doesn't matter what spectrum you want to declare yourself on, in, in what context. If a stroke is coming for you, it is coming for you. It, it doesn't matter, it will find you. <clears throat> so, there was one vaccine or is one back there is a vaccine called varicella varicella at one point was under consideration for having a possibility of causing a stroke so they did a um a the um, database search from 1991 to 2004 about children that had been given the varicella vaccine and the possibility of having a stroke so there were 3.2 million children in the cohort that were given the varicella vaccine 35.3% of those were, you know, examined. 
Out of that, 203 were administered for an inpatient ischemic stroke. And eight of those occurred within 12 months after the vaccination. They found there was no what they call temporal clustering, right? And they found that there is no link between stroke and the varicella vaccine. So this one vaccine at one point was considered to maybe being the cause of juvenile stroke. Well, a stroke occurs in 11 per 100,000 children under the age of 18 every year. It's still one of the top 10 causes of the death of children. And that study on varicella, their conclusion was a study of 3 million children that have had the varicella vaccine and there is no association between the varicella vaccine and ischemic stroke. So again, if that doesn't prove my point, vaccines do not cause stroke. Right? Stroke cannot be attributed, associated, or have any causal link to strokes and vaccine. It just doesn't exist. And if we take 3.2 million, we take 35% of that, which roughly come, if I've done my sums correctly, comes out to 1,129,600 children, right? If I take 203 of those, that becomes 0.0001 of a percent. If you're due to do a correlational co coefficient, the numbers are relevant. Right? It wouldn't even be worth charting. So a study that intentionally went looking for a causal relationship between a specific vaccine and stroke couldn't find one. And their whole mission was to look for that data. So if you're going to try to say, hey, well, you couldn't find a study that could prove your point. Well, I found a study that intentionally went looking for the link. They determined the link doesn't exist. When you consider the Fullerton study that children that have not been properly vaccinated are at sevenfold increased risk for stroke, well, I don't think it's the fact that you haven't vaccinated your, your vaccines are causing it. I think the fact you're being an irresponsible parent and not properly looking after your children is causing it. And then when you look at other things such as the majority of people that have stroke are going to be 60 years or greater, right? Um, so the vast majority of the people that have had stroke are over 60. So for them to get a cold or get a fever or get an infection, unfortunately, their immune system is already slightly compromised just because of this thing called age, right? Um, and that being said, they have a lack of ability to fight off some of these things. So is there a causal link between you might already have an infection or some form of inflammation, um, you then go and get the vaccine, the vaccine causes more inflammation, you then trigger an immunological response in the body, and then at that point, they have a stroke. I don't know. Someone, would, someone who's got some serious... Uh, medical chops would have to do the research on that because I'm not qualified in any way. Okay. Um, and again, if you want more information about stroke, uh, please go to your local stroke association. Uh, I've in many of my videos, I've left links down below about, you know, what actually causes stroke. Um, I've done a few videos on that. Uh, if you want more information about other YouTube channels that uh, have done things to debunk uh, the misinformation about vaccines and vaccines cause things like autism because vaccines don't. And, and because of this precarious position where people seem to think vaccines cause autism, autism is a neurological disorder. So if it can cause one neurological disorder, um, it can cause strokes. Vaccines do not cause autism. Vaccines do not cause stroke. Um, and if you want to see more informational channels that debunk the myths around vaccines, you can please go check out Jeff Holiday or you can check out Miles Power. They've done some excellent work uh, in, in, on, on various subjects. Uh, so 
again, for those of you that want to think the vaccines have any relationship to any form of neurological disorder, deficit, disease, dysfunction, you're wrong. You're just plain wrong. And, and I don't have the energy or the compunction to try to deflate your ego and dispel the misinformation that you believe is knowledge <clears throat> because it's not. So on that note, I'm just going to say vaccines don't cause stroke. Other things cause stroke, but vaccines is not one of them. And if you happen to see or like what you've been watching over the last 10 months, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to friends. Uh, if you happen to know someone going through their own post-stroke journey or supporting someone going through their own post-stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. If you want to leave a comment about any one of my videos, please go down to the comment section below and leave a comment. If you want to get in contact with me directly, you can get in contact with me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, that is strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who has not been recently vaccinated because vaccines have nothing to do with this, someone who appears to be befuddled, confused, has lost their sense of balance, someone who has vision problems, they can't see it in one eye, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, uh, they only see in grayscale, they see like a little dot in the world, someone who has facial droop, there's a, there's a noticeable visual slackness with the facial muscles, in my case, included drooling. Um, they can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They can't uh, smile equally effectively or at all. Uh, they have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Um, they have uh, inability to uh, stand unaided. They have general body weakness or weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.